Hi, my name is David Geiger, and welcome to the show. Today, my guest is a former DVP student and now an ABC News reporter. Ladies and gentlemen, Christopher Brantley. How are you doing today, Chris? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. So let me just ask you a quick question. Um, what led you to part of DVP? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on the show. You're welcome. It's absolutely <laughs> wonderful to be here. Uh, you know, DVP was the crux of my of my high school and and at the same time college career. Right. And it, I never expected it to happen. I never expected to be in DVP. I didn't know what I wanted to do around 10th grade. I couldn't, <laughs> I knew I had an idea that I wanted to write, that I wanted to be in journalism in some form, uh, but I didn't know where to take that. And uh, when the program came about for digital video production, it just kind of resonated with me a little bit when they were talking about it. Um, of course, back then we had a different campus. It was a completely different school, it, really? it seemed like. And uh, when the opportunity arose, I, I couldn't turn it down. The opportunity to come in here and learn about things like this, about learning how to do an interview, to, to you, know, uh, you know, set a setup, to, to set mics up, that, that was also exciting to me. And it didn't seem like it was real work. And, and that was the kind of, that was something that I really was excited about, was DVP didn't seem like real work because, yeah. you know, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your yeah. life. And that's, that's the way I felt about DVP. Yeah, it's not a job, it's like a career, right? Exactly. Yeah, I feel you there. So, um, how did it help you in your career now today? Well, you know, bringing uh, DVP into my life kind of gave me a little bit more of an idea of where I wanted to go. And uh, when I sat through the first day, I, I knew this is it. Mm -hmm. And going through the whole program and getting out of the program and uh, being able to intern at ABC7, that was everything to me. And I learned everything from DVP. I learned how to run a camera, how to, like I said, mic somebody up. I learned all of that from DVP. So when I walked in on the first day of my internship, the people at ABC7, my coworkers now, did not expect for a moment that I'd know what I'm doing. They wouldn't expect me to turn a camera on, much less go out and shoot a video of a crime scene or what have you. Uh, so being able to learn all of that in DVP and then go out and immediately put it to action, and almost immediately I say that because I left high school and left DVP walked straight into ABC7 as an intern for six months, unpaid, unpaid, important to note that, <laughs> um, and then, you know, began full-time employment with ABC7, paid at that point. Uh, but being able to walk in on day one of my internship um, and, and know exactly what I'm doing, mm -hmm. all thanks to DVP. <laughs> Was it scary at least? Terrifying. Terrifying? Terrifying. Absolutely okay. mortifying. <laughs> I, I'll never forget the, the sense of terror because it, at our office we have the giant gates uh, that have razor wire around the top. And you have to, those of us that are employees, you know, kind of go around to drive and the, the gate opens for us. And we have a little card, you know, to swipe to open the gate. So the first day that I pulled in and I had my card mm -hmm. and I, I swiped the gate, as soon as the gate opened, it was just terror, absent, <laughs> absolute terror until Jeez. I walked out wow. uh, and drove out that same gate in the evening. Wow. Uh, but That's you fall in love with it. Really? You fall in love with the terror. Yeah. <laughs> I still feel that sometimes when I walk <laughs> in. <laughs> so um, speaking before we get off the topic of DVP, mm -hmm. what was uh, your favorite memories at DVP? You know, uh, <laughs> it's so hard having spent two years in the program with all of my best friends that are still my friends. Uh, it's so hard to whittle it down to only a couple. Uh, I have to say, though, that the one memory uh, that sticks very clearly with me and a couple of my, my friends, because we talk about it regularly, as if it's the first time we're ever <laughs> talking about it, was uh, the very first day. Um, it, everything seemed to be going wrong. It, 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 for the whole day, it was raining, and it was... We couldn't find our way around the campus. At that point, the campus was spread out. They're all one floor buildings. And the, the classroom that we went into, we hadn't seen before. I hadn't seen before. And it was an old garage. So the garage doors and the air conditioning unit was just a wall unit against the wall. And it was dark in the classroom. And we're like, that's sketchy. This is all sketchy. This doesn't <laughs> yeah. seem right. And then Mr. Gray walks in. And I don't know if it was Mr. Gray's sense of humor on day one. 
but he was wearing all gray and introduced <laughs> himself as Bob Gray. And we went, oh, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> this is, this is going to be a great oh, year. Um, of course, within 10 minutes, we, you know, had oh, completely yeah. different thought. But we were, that was, I remember being so terrified, and I was never terrified to start school. But starting school that day, I went, I'm not sure how this year is going to play <laughs> out. But I was, that's probably the thing that sticks with me the most because it was such a contrast to the way I really felt about DVP. Because I walked in going, I'm not sure if this is going to be good. This is all sketchy. And the, the day I walked out um, on <clears throat> the last day of high school, I remember not an emotional human being, mind you. I, I remember getting, you know, a little misty, teary. A, little, a little teary eyed. I was, yeah. a, I was a little upset. So. It became like a family, right? Oh, it totally. It yeah. becomes a family from Mr. Gray down. And, and you know, first year, second years, we, we all uh, were very close, and you couldn't help but be close when you're, you know, spending so many hours with people <laughs> every single day and yeah. then going out on shoots with them after school. You can't help but get close to them. I feel you there. Mm -hmm. um, so, how did you start working at EB7? You know, that is a crazy story um, that I love to tell people because I, like I said, I was an unpaid intern mm -hmm. for six months. And not easy. Not easy to do that for six months. Um, and all of a sudden, I'm standing in, in the newsroom and the news director at the time, this I'm still an intern, news director pulls me into his office and says, uh, you know, you're not receiving college credit for this. You know, you're, you're not getting paid for this. We're not compensating you in any way, shape, or form. And I think you need to go. And I protested a little bit. And I said, you know, well, you know, I'm learning so much. I'm helping out so much, you know, that he sees me around the newsroom every day. And he said, he said, you just don't, you don't have a future in this career. You don't, you're not going to be in television. He said, you're far too young for our market. Um, no one's going to like you on the air. And, I, and he says specifically, he'd never put me on the air. Um, and so he asked that that be my last day. And so that was, that was a day I left. I didn't tell anybody. He didn't tell anybody. And here's where my big break comes in. Um, I, I come in the next day anyway, because I figure, what do I have to lose? Yeah, why not, right? Why not? Exactly. Why not? You go in. If he kicks me out, he kicks me out. Yeah. Um, I kind of hoped that maybe he'd forget. So I spent half the day hiding from him, went out on a couple shoots, came back, and by the time I had to go into the newsroom, which is a giant open room, and he could see everybody from his office, I turned the corner into the newsroom, and there he's standing with a box full of his personal items. Oh. And people were standing around him, and I bolted to the bathroom, and I hid in the bathroom for 10 minutes and waited and waited and waited. Um, until I figured by this point, security had to have, you know, kind of moved him along. And uh, he was a great guy, don't get me wrong. Uh, but he, he, that was his last day of employment at ABC7. And uh, I walked into the newsroom 10 minutes later. He never told anybody to kick me out. Nobody was the wiser. I stayed on for, I think it was another month before they hired me full time. And it was a full year after I had worked there for full time before I told anybody that he had actually asked for me to leave. So That's a really cool story. Yeah, it was. And the, that, was, that was me just being able to stay, but being able to be hired was uh, a photographer left her position, and uh, they had 100. As I recall, it was around 100 applicants to the job. Some of them were Emmy Award-winning photographers. One of them I specifically remember was a National Geographic videographer. Um, and for whatever reason, the vice president of our company was doing the hiring that day, and he just decided to hire me. Hey, you made the right choice. I, yeah, then I started getting paid. That's really, that's really awesome. Yeah. It's much nicer to go into the office every day when you're receiving a paycheck. <laughs> I bet, I bet. So, um, what does it like to be on set of an ABC7? <laughs> you know, the first time you walk on set as just you know, as a floor director or, you know, I was a camera operator in the studio for a little while. Uh, that's a little intimidating. The first day you walk into the studio with a microphone on and an earpiece in your ear and they're telling you one minute to show, <laughs> <laughs> that's a feeling right there. That's, uh, that's where you get your adrenaline rush. You don't need coffee when you're about to go <laughs> on the air. 
um, because you you realize that you're you know directly staring into a camera, and on the other side of that camera can be upwards uh, of eighty thousand people. Our, our last ratings book was about eighty thousand watches on standard, uh, but at six o'clock in the evening. The first time I went on set to do something live, by the way, was completely unscripted. There had been a plane crash on Casperson Beach down in Venice. It was, a, it was I believe, it was a Sunday, <clears throat> and I was a weekend reporter. But they had only had me doing taped things before. I had never been live. And uh, plane crashes, I go down there. I was the only reporter on the scene that evening. Um, and so I did the story. I, I shot everything. I went back to the studio. And my boss called from home and said, I want you on set in the chair for the 6.30 broadcast. And uh, I did two minutes with our anchor, Mac, Max Winnitz. Uh, just about completely unscripted. I had bullet points in front of me, uh, but the teleprompter was useless. I, I just had to wing it. So that was my very first time live, and that's terrifying when I you bet. walk into the studio and you go, we are two minutes to show and I have no script. Let's just do it. So, um, so do you have any stories, by the way, of being on, on, uh, on your favorite stories? You know, uh, I, I won't call this my favorite story. Um, no, I have two. I, I, I won't call this one my favorite story. This is probably why I real this is the moment I realize excuse me why I do what I do uh, a couple weeks ago we had a series of, of bad storms that came through middle yeah, of the night yeah. 3 a.m. everybody gets woken up by alerts on their phones as did I I had only gone I had come from a late movie so I had gone to bed at 2 a.m. that morning <laughs> and I was up by 3 a.m. that morning and uh, my office I was texting one of my bosses and, and saying, you know, like, do we have anybody out in the field? Our weatherman, Bob Harrigan, had been on the air for a couple hours by this point. And they said, we don't have anybody. Nobody's come in yet to get on the air, to go out to the scenes. Um, and I, because I'm a bureau, I have my camera, I have a work vehicle all at my house. So I jumped in the car. So went to bed at 2, was up at 3, on the air by 3.30, blowing around in the wind. Um, and we, I did, specific, uh, specifically I did, live programming for six hours that morning, straight. No script. You, you are standing in front of multiple different scenes, moving around, and you're describing what you're seeing. And the amount of people that were watching us mm -hmm. was unprecedented. And it was a, a marathon, 14-hour day, straight, with one hour sleep. And I stopped at Panera Bread on the way home you know, for dinner, and uh, three people stopped me from three separate groups just while I'm in Panera for less than 10 minutes to, to say, great job, you know, we were watching you. Because what we do, what our job as journalists is to get relevant information to people. And I knew that's what we've been doing for the last three years of me being there. But going on the air for six hours straight and telling people this, and this is serious. You know, we have to, you know, be careful because more storms were popping up and we saw, you know, the possibility for more. Right. Getting out there and telling people this is urgent, um, that that truly, that showed me why what we do is so important. The, my most favorite story um, is I got to, uh, oh, this is just, this is an honor. It gives me chills thinking about it still. <laughs> I got to fly to Washington, D.C. Um, with the Honor Flight Group, which really? is a group of veterans and that go up uh, to see their memorials for a day in Washington, D.C. They don't pay a dollar. These are World War II veterans to Iraq War veterans. And the emotion, we're at the airport in Fort Myers at 5 a.m. and boarded a plane that was specially chartered by Southwest to get us there um, and back. And there were full military honors at the at, at DFW in, in, in or excuse me at, at Dulles, in, in Washington. There was a, one of the uh, vice admirals, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, was standing there waiting to to shake these men's hands. And you you walk off and you go, wow. And it was that all day. Every memorial we went to, it was raining, it was freezing. These 80s, 90 year old men and women got on and off the bus every, every memorial we went to, soaking wet uh, to see their memorial. Most of these people, low income, have never been. Um, that was the coolest story I think I could ever do. Sounds like it. And, and I got to work on that story for a couple days and put together a long form piece for it. And uh, I'll, I'll never forget that. So it was like breathtaking? Breathtaking. It was, it was mind boggling walking around Washington, D.C. 
um, following these people who were there during so many of these, con so many consequential moments in American history, who have never seen the memorials for them, being there with them as they're seeing it for the first time, uh, being very emotional. You just, you can't help but get emotional yourself and you can't help but think about it all the time. Right, wow, that's something else. Yeah, it is. Um, so for people that are interested in becoming a reporter, what, what, what advice would you give them for going into that career path? Ask questions, ask so many questions. Uh, the, the, the most important thing that we do is getting ourselves out there and, and reporting the news and asking tough questions of people in power. That is what people need to do. Um, you, can, you can go to school for it. Mm -hmm. You can take classes for it as much as you want. But if you're not willing to get out there and ask questions and get your hands dirty sometimes, in the you know in the search for answers right. um, then you're never gonna make it so what I tell people is that a, a lot of kids say a lot of kids not necessarily high school students but a lot of kids say they want to be news anchors and I tell people do not ever say that don't ever say you want to be a news anchor uh, say you want to be a reporter because that's how you get into this field uh, mm -hmm. news anchors were reporters at one time I never want to be chained to a desk. <laughs> I never want to be reading a teleprompter five nights a week. I want to be out there you know, reporting news. And that's what I tell people. Ask tons of questions and say you want to be a reporter. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. So you said you like to be out there and doing mm -hmm. things. And you said you were there for the, for the weather reports and everything. Is it scary? Is it terrifying to be out there in the hard winds? I got knocked over at about 3.45-ish in the morning. Um, I, in my earpiece, I could hear uh, Bob Harrigan saying, I was on Siesta Key, he said, uh, Siesta Key's about to get hit with heavy winds coming off the Gulf in a couple minutes, and I'm like, eh, I'll be fine. I'm, you know, nestled in between buildings. Um, so he, they come out to me, you know, ABC 7's Christopher Brantley's out at, uh, on Siesta Key. I start talking and describing, you know, the voracious winds coming through and, you know, like there's debris everywhere. Um, they were literally lawn chairs that were you know, beach chairs that were on the beach that are scattered across Midnight Pass, you know, across several lanes of road. Um, and I'm describing that. And in the middle of me describing that, the camera goes over and I hit the ground really hard and busted my, my left knee pretty hard. Ouch. So that got a little terrifying. You know, we got back in the car pretty quick. <laughs> you had people help you, though? No, I was by myself. The firefighters, uh, the, there was a firefighter not far away. He came, he came running over and... Um, I, I noticed he got my camera up before uh -huh. me, uh, which I was very appreciative about because the camera's worth a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> so besides all the newscasting and everything, is there any hobbies or interests you like to do? You know, when you're in as a bureau chief, mm -hmm. you don't really have a whole lot of time. <laughs> you, you find yourself working you know, early in the morning to late in the evening and weekends sometimes shooting different stories. Um, we have a, a new show that we started a few months ago uh, that's a, a 7 p.m. show. It's long-form pieces of journalism, you know, rather than 90-second stories. They're three to four or five minutes. Cool. Um, so I find myself shooting a lot for those and, and preparing a lot for that, sto that show. Um, besides work, <laughs> um, I, I tend to find myself at the Oslo very often seeing a lot of shows. Love um, one beautiful thing about living in a cultural city like this is uh, you get to see, you know, fantastic, you know, performances. And, and it is nice at the end of the day, mm. after a long day of, you know, living in this crazy world to be able to step back into a, a you know, pretend world for a couple hours. <laughs> and that's very nice. So you, you like arts? You know, I, I, I do enjoy the art, arts and culture, right. but I'm getting into the Oslo uh, a little bit more. I'm starting to like stage production a little bit more. I've always liked it, but now I'm going to see a ballet this evening. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Were you ever involved in drum club here? No. No? No. No, I was, I, I'm not good at, at doing it myself. I'm, I can appreciate it. Right. I, I can appreciate it from the cheap seats with a cup of coffee, uh, but uh, I, I couldn't be on the stage. That's, that's, I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else we would like to know? You know, just uh, DVP put me to where I am today. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when I get asked almost on a daily basis how old I am, and I say I'm 23, and they say, 
how in the world are you 23 years <laughs> old in, in your job? And I, I say because I had an amazing school, an amazing teacher who put me exactly to where I was supposed to be and taught me everything I needed to know for day one of work. And uh, then being able to come in and, and uh, uh, or I should say, into ABC7 mm -hmm. and, and put all of everything I learned uh, straight to work was fantastic. Oh, well, thank you for your time today. Mm -hmm. And I hope you guys have a lovely night and thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.